I'm going to take off this brace. It has six 15 millimeter uh, mounting bolts, well, four bolts, two nuts. Uh, take them all off, and then we'll remove this piece. Hold it and remove it. Now I want to take off these two 10 millimeter bolts to free up this bracket. So in our case, the pipe is broken right here. It's pretty much ready to fall off. So I have a uh, pole jack supporting the rest of the exhaust here. I'm going to lower it a little bit, and I'm just going to basically finish breaking this pipe off. There we go. What this is going to do is it's going to allow me to move this to the side and um, support it over here. Let's pop the rubber hanger off next. Um, they make a special tool for this, but I found that if you just use some pliers like this, you can easily do the same job as that special tool. And you can just slide this right off. Maybe. Oh, there we go. That popped off. Same on this side. If you need to spray it with some lubricant, I would suggest using silicone spray. If you have to use an oil-based spray, go ahead, but a lot of times that tends to disintegrate the rubber. All right, this side's disconnected. You probably can't see this side, but I'm gonna cut this side. the uh, mounting hardware torched off of there. Take this off and discard that. And there are still studs in here. I'm gonna have to uh, basically cut them flush, drill them out, punch them out, or just melt them like I did the other side uh, so that I can put new mounting bolts in here. Use a 19 millimeter socket, take off all five of your lug nuts and remove the wheel. Um, now I'm doing this because this vehicle is all-wheel drive. If you don't have all-wheel drive, you might be able to get away with uh, not removing the wheel, the axle, and the, so on. Uh, but in my case, I have to because I have to get the transfer case out of the way, so stuff has to come out. 32 millimeter socket, remove your axle nut. And then you want to make sure your axle pushes through the hub. This one doesn't, so I'm going to get a punch and a hammer, try to drive it through. Okay, it broke free. It's not going to go in all the way, because obviously you need to pull the knuckle down, but it broke free, and that's what I needed. Next, I'm going to disconnect the pinch bolt for the lower ball joint. Use an 18 millimeter socket on the nut side and hold the bolt side with a 15 or the other way around, whatever works for you. The bolt moves, that's perfect. Sometimes it's seized up in there, you'll have to work it back and forth with rust penetrant. But in our case, it, uh, it is free, so I'm just going to go ahead and hammer it out. Perfect. Take a hammer, hammer down on here, and 
Uh, it's best if you have a pry bar prying down on the control arm at the same time. There we go. That did the trick. Now, now I'm going to push the axle through. There we go. Get it out of the uh, hub. Set it aside. I'm going to take a bungee cord, bungee cord it up onto the strut for now, and that'll allow me to. Um, I'm just going to put this back in here so that it can not potentially damage the boot while I do my job. But the axle's out, so that's what matters. So now I want to remove the cap for the carrier bearing, two 13 millimeter nuts. Take both of those off. There's one, and there's one above. There it is, take it off. At this point, you can, um, or you should be able to at least, drive the axle out that way to remove it from the carrier bearing. So I'm gonna stick a pry bar in here and basically wedge it between this carrier bearing and the axle. There we go. At this point, I'm gonna pause. I'm gonna put a collection bucket here in case fluid comes out. Okay, here we go. Slide this out. All right, remove the axle. Grab your axle. Make sure it's clear of everything, pull it out, set it aside. Next, I'm gonna take off these T45 bolts that hold the drive shaft onto the transfer case. Come on, get out of there. There's one. Save these little brackets. You have to reinstall those. Okay. With the vehicle in neutral, you can take the drive shaft and just spin it so you can get access to those bolts that are now on the top. Well, were on the top, now they're on the bottom. So unthread those. Okay, two 10 millimeter bolts in the middle here. That holds the carrier bearing on for the drive shaft. Take those out. Next, there are four 10 millimeter bolts that hold this bracket on. Take this one off as well. Next, I want to take this uh, brace off over here. Four more 10 millimeter bolts.
put in a pole jack here. That's going to support the weight of the drive shaft for us while we disconnect it from the rear differential. At the rear, on the rear differential, you have the same T45 mounting bolts. Let's remove those as well. In the drive shaft so we can get to the rest of the bolts. the last two bolts out, be careful. Use a little pry bar and there's a notch right down here where you can stick it in and use this to separate it. There we go. the back of the drive shaft, that would be from the transfer case side, you'll see all the threaded holes where the bolts came out of, but then you will see two non-threaded holes, um, which you'll notice immediately because they're rusty. You have to stick a punch in there, a long, narrow punch, and with a hammer, tap the drive shaft out. Hopefully this works out for you. I'm gonna grab the drive shaft, slide it out, and set it aside. Next, what I wanna do is remove this oxygen sensor while the pipe is still mounted to the engine. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna put my oxygen sensor socket on here, slide it over the wire. There we go. Find the best angle that you can reach it at. For me, it's probably gonna be like this. Try and break it free. Now these are sometimes very stuck on here. If that's the case, you can heat it up. But let's give it a shot without and see what happens. Oh, wow, look at that, I got it. Okay, let's go ahead and unthread this. Now keep in mind it is still connected, plugged in that is, so the wire is just going to kind of wrap itself around itself. Um, so just be mindful of that as you unthread it. There it is. Take that out, set it aside. Next we have to take off the upstream O2 sensor. That's the one closest to the engine. It's this one right here. Just follow the pipe up and you can um, put your socket on at whatever angle works for you. I think for me, I'm going to have to go over here and very much block your view, but that's, that's the only option I have. Oh, it's in. There we go. That's spinning. Perfect. Again, this one's also still connected, so be mindful of the wires that are twisting. 
There it is. Set that aside. Next, I want to take off the elbow for the charge pipe. So I'm going to take my seven millimeter socket and I'm going to undo this clamp over here. And just back it off a little bit, enough to loosen the clamp so you can pull the uh, pipe off. All right, that should be good right there. That's nice and loose. Follow it up and you have the choice of removing either of these two clamps here, but I'm going to pick the top one. That way I get rid of this piece of hose as well. Same size, seven millimeter. down and there we go all right so next I want to take off the heat shield that sits on top of this transfer case here it's held on by three eight millimeter bolts and maybe with a mirror you can see what I'm talking about um, a little hard to see but at least you can get an idea of what's happening there is one right here one. There's the second one. Okay, there's the third one. And now we can take the shield out. I have to kind of uh, lift it up and over and just maneuver it however you can to get it out of here. So this is how the shield sits on the transfer case. That's the back of the vehicle. This is where the drive shaft connects and this is the transfer case here. You can see it has one bolt. This was the hardest one to reach. And then another one here and one here. The transfer case is held on by five 13 millimeter bolts onto the transmission. There are three here and two up top which are pretty hard to see. I'm going to take these five off first and then there's a bracket on the front side that I'm going to leave for last. Now let's just start over here, take these off. In order to get to those top two bolts, um, I'm going to do some things that maybe you don't have to do depending on what tools you have, but I can't get a tool in there to loosen up the bolt that's right here. So um, I'm going to proceed to taking off this bracket here, which we have to take off anyway for the exhaust. So if we, I don't do it now, I'm going to do it later. So I might as well just do it now and then um, bend the uh, bracket on the pipe a little bit just so I can get a tool in there better. So hopefully that does the trick. There's one. So on this one, for me, the, uh, the nut came out with the stud. That's fine. I can show you how to separate them later. Here it is. Let's get the two 13 millimeter nuts off that hold the bracket onto the exhaust. There's one. There's two. I want to take this other stud out. The, um, the one that sits here came out with the nut, which is fine. Uh, the reason I want to take this out is so I can slide this bracket down. You can use an E8 socket. That's an inverted torque socket and just pull the stud right out of the transmission. And of course, um, I'll show you, like I said before, how to separate the nut from that stud. There's a trick that I found, and because you'll have to reinstall the stud before the nut goes on. That way you can properly bottom it out without ruining threads. So the uh, stud is too long and it's pushing my tool into this and I can't really, uh, I don't want to damage the threads or the inverted torques part with pliers or locking pliers or anything 
the like. So what I'm going to do is put on two nuts that I, uh, they're actually the two that sit right above. It's the same thread pattern. And what I'm going to do is basically use the double nut method to unthread this stud. So I'm putting on this nut. I'm going to thread it on quite a bit, enough to have threads left over for the other nut. Just like this, that should be fine. Maybe I'll bring it in a few more turns. And I'm going to press one up against the other. That'll lock them in tight. And that's going to allow me to remove my uh, stud without using the inverted torx end on it. So I have, so at this point I have two mounting nuts on here. One that I'm holding with a wrench and the other one I'm going to snug up with another wrench. All right, snug those two up. And now what you can do is use this outer one. Now what you can do is use the outer one and drive out the whole stud. Basically what's happening is the two nuts are pressing together, locking themselves up against the threads. And when you unthread the nut, instead of unthreading the nut because there's so much pressure on the threads, it just takes the stud out with it. So there's that. I'm going to jack up the engine a little bit on the corner of the oil pan. Very important. You don't want to go in the middle because in the middle it's a weak spot. You can punch right through it, whereas the corner has the flat side. Oh, there we go. Bracket just popped off. So by raising the engine, what I'm doing is I'm increasing the distance between this and the exhaust pipe brackets out, or the bottom part of the bracket. Now you have to take this part off. Unfortunately, I have to take this mount off so I can finish removing this bracket so I can go back to working on the exhaust. But basically, a 15 millimeter socket will take off all the bolts that hold this on. I'm going to start with this one. And then move along to this one over here. Okay, and then there's one over here. I'm going to have to do that one by hand. All right, this is out, this is out, that's what I needed. This tool here, which is a, the end of a, a ratchet head, and it's made to put a ratchet in it, and I'm going to use this to hopefully reach around the transfer case from the bottom and break this bolt free. And there we go, it just broke free. That is awesome. I'm going to go ahead and ratchet this out. There isn't much room, and if you don't have this tool, what I honestly suggest you do is you buy a cheap 13 millimeter wrench, heat it up or cut it, and weld it or bend it into place, or into the position that you need. I mean, or you can just buy the curved, curved wrenches. They make curved wrenches for this kind of reason, to reach around things, but you know, usually you buy those in a pack. Oh, this bolt's almost out. There we go. All right, there's another one. Next, which is the last bolt that holds this transfer case onto the transmission, it's going to be this one right here. And this one is going to be a little bit easier to get to. All right. There we go. Now, next, I want to take off this bracket that holds the transfer case. This is the last thing holding this on. So, uh, you know, watch out. But See? Easy. Whoa. Okay. 
last one on the engine side. Take this breather hose off. I'm using a pry bar just because I need something longer to reach in there while I hold the transfer case. But whatever you use, just be gentle and make sure you don't damage the hose. Next, I'm gonna try and get to the exhaust bolts from up top, which means removing the wiper arms and then the cowl to make room. Underneath the base of each wiper arm, there's a cap. Remove it, and that'll expose a 15 millimeter nut. Remove that as well. With that off, you can take the arm off. And you can do that by simply wiggling it back and forth until it kind of breaks free. Perfect. Do the same to the driver's side. Perfect. Next, to remove the cowl, there are a bunch of these clips all along. You have to take a pick or a flathead screwdriver, whatever you have, lift up on them and pull out at the same time. You have to kind of do this from bottom and top. Just go all along and remove all of them. At this point, you can grab the cowl, pull up on it. Up and out. Lift it, set it aside. Next, I want to take off the master cylinder reservoir with a T25 Torx bit. You don't have to remove it, just unbolt it and let it drop down over there. And then we have to remove this piece up here. And on each side, there will be uh, two eight millimeter bolts that you can remove. One over here, one over here. And as you can see, that lifts it up. Do the same to the driver's side. Slide this out. Set it aside. Next, I want to take off the air box and the battery and the battery tray and everything so I can get access down here to one of the bolts for the exhaust. And I'm going to start by disconnecting this clamp here or uh, loosening it up. And once you loosen it up, the clamp's not going to come off, but it's going to release the hose from the rest of the intake. Okay. Pull that off, just leave it like that for now. And then we're gonna move over here. There's gonna be a strap at the uh, front of the air intake here. And you can lift this up like that, unplug this connection here, and remove the wiring harness. side. Now with all of these disconnected, watch out for the other things that are in your way here. You can pull up on this. Oh, okay, that, that comes off. Set that aside. To continue removing the battery, lift up the cover. There's another cover in the back. Set those aside. 
10 millimeter socket to loosen up the terminals. That's the positive. This one back here is the negative. Take the negative off first. Set it aside where it can't make contact. Take off the positive. Do the same thing. And now with a 10 millimeter, loosen up the battery hold down. There's one. Two. Remove this bracket. Lift this up. Get this out of our way. And then we can remove the battery. Take out three 10 millimeter bolts to remove the battery tray. There's one at the front here. One right in the middle. And one all the way at the back in that little divot. Pick those up. Take off these two push clips. This one just fell out. Take off those two so you can disconnect this little module here. And then there's another push clip that's attaching this. Pull that out. And you can pull out the battery tray. So the bolt that I'm aiming for is the one that is right up against the engine. The other two that are slotted are out in the open, of course. Uh, but anyway, I'm, I did this so that I can get to it from above because from underneath it's probably going to be impossible. If you can, go for it. But um, basically I'm going to use a long extension with a swivel and my 10 millimeter socket. And I'm going to try to get the socket on here. It's really hard to see. I can barely see it. I can only see it if the light is in this specific location and only from a very, very um, hard to reach angle. And you can only see like an eighth of the head of the bolt anyway. So you have a very, very limited view of it, but I'm going to try and get a socket on there so I can loosen it up and remove it all the way. Okay, the socket is on here. Let's pull the trigger and see what happens. From the bottom, let's get the other two 10 millimeter bolts out. Now, fortunately, these ones you don't have to remove all the way. As you can see, the pipe is slotted. All you have to do is uh, unthread them a little bit. I know you don't have to take them all the way out, but I'm going to do it anyway because the top bolt that I have up there, uh, well, it's unthreaded, but it, it hasn't come out yet. I can't get to it. So because it's still there, I'm going to have to pull the pipe off uh, back and then out, So, which means I can't use the slots to slide it. Okay, it's off. There you have it. It's got to come out through the back. There it is. We need to transfer this shield, the heat shield, over to the new exhaust before this goes on the car. And hopefully yours is salvageable. A lot of times these heat shields will rot away, as you can see this one's starting to. And if, it's, if that's the case for you, I would suggest getting a new one. Uh, it's not a great idea to put this in without a heat shield because this is the catalytic converter and it gets extremely hot, especially right after the turbo, which also gets really hot. And you want this to protect everything else from the heat uh, that comes off of this. So, so for these uh, bolts, for me, I'm gonna use uh, an extractor socket. Hammer it on. It'll grip onto the bolt nice and tight. Even if the bolt breaks, that's fine. At least I can get the shield off and then I can put in a new bolt. Yeah, 
look at that. Okay, there's two of them. And these ones up here are in slightly better condition, so I'm just gonna try and take them out the regular way. Yep. Okay, so I can salvage and reuse these top two bolts here. I'll remove the shield and let's put it on the new exhaust. Slide it on there. Ooh. Line up all the bolt holes. I have new bolts. They're six by one thread if you need any. And I put some lock washers in that way. I make sure that they are going to stay in and not back off. This part experiences a lot of vibrations. And the lock washers will hopefully help hold these in. Go ahead and start in the bolts. I'm gonna start all of them in before I tighten any down, just so I can still move the shield around as needed. Okay. up first. Okay, number two. Number three is up here. Last one. Perfect. Let's get this into the vehicle. To get ready for reinstallation, you have to take off the old gasket. There should be a new one. And you wanna clean up this area. I'm gonna use a sanding disc, sand it all down. But first, I'm gonna punch out these studs here. And uh, of course, I'm gonna have new bolts that come through so I can attach the new pipe properly. So I'm probably gonna take the torch, cut those off flush, um, and uh, just make some nice holes here so I can put new studs in. Now I'm going to grab my sanding disc and just sand this all down flat, nice and even, nice and clean surface. I cleaned the surface here. It's nice and flat, no rust, no debris that gets in the way of the gasket. You want this to be as clean as possible so that you can have a perfect seal for the uh, exhaust. If you don't have a sanding disc, if all you have, if, if all you have is a wire brush, I would strongly suggest getting a sanding block and making sure that this is flat. And then uh, since I had to melt the studs out here, I have to clean up my holes a little bit so I can find some bolts that slide through. And then we can get ready to mount the exhaust. And just like I cleaned this, I also want to clean the turbo side on the other side where the exhaust mounts. It shouldn't be corroded or dirty, but again, you want a nice uh, clean surface for the exhaust to mount. put in the two bolts that have the uh, slot on the exhaust, so this one down here. Now I had to clean up two of the bolt holes on the turbo side um, with a tap because the threads were a little bit messed up, so uh, now I can thread them both in or all of them in by hand, which is what you want. So I'm going to put that one in, start it, and then do the same for this one. I'm doing this so that when I put the exhaust up in there, it'll be much easier to basically just hang it on the bolts and leave it there while I 
put the rest of it on as opposed to trying to hold it and balance it and everything. So these are in here. I have washers on both. There's a gasket that goes along here. Should be provided with your exhaust. Slide this on. Now carefully bring the exhaust up. And if the gasket falls, I can just put it back once the exhaust is up there. Shield again. these a little bit closer. The gasket's in there. It's uh, lined up. I'm not going to tighten them. I just want to bring it close enough to where the gasket can't fall out as I move the exhaust to line up the rear. Uh, I will line up the rear before I put in that top bolt, the third one up front here. That way it's all connected and that's why I'm not going to tighten these yet because not all the bolts are in. And even though I do connect the pipe on the rear to the rest of the exhaust system, um, I can still move it around because there's a flex pipe in there. So it's not, it's not going to be tight. It's just going to be temporarily secured. All right. So uh, I have my bolt in my socket. I used a little rag to kind of shove it in there and lock it into my socket. Unless you have a magnetic socket, that'd be helpful. And then to hold this washer on, uh, I just put some grease on there. It's going to burn off when the exhaust gets hot. Just it'll make some smoke. So keep that in mind if you use that. Anyway, let's get this down into the uh, exhaust manifold, or the turbo, I guess. I'm going to put in the top O2 sensor, the upstream, while I'm here, and it'll be easiest if uh, it gets unplugged and disconnected from this bracket. That way I can twist the wire as needed and not worry about it breaking. Okay. Take this out. I'm going to put it in this way and then we'll route it after, route the wire afterwards. It's a good idea to put a little bit of anti-seize on the threads here, which I will right now. Don't put too much, just enough to coat the threads and try not to get it on this area of the sensor. This usually helps it come out a little bit easier next time it has to be removed. And like I said, don't put too much, just enough to cover the threads. Okay, now take the O2 sensor, slide it down into its hole. I like to turn it counterclockwise to begin until I feel it skip. That's how I know it's on the first thread. Then you go ahead and thread it in. Now I'm going to use a different socket than what I used to remove it. It's this style socket. Either works, but from this angle, this one's a little bit easier to use. The only disadvantage is it kind of peens over the wire, but it's not, not too bad. Need more extension. Okay, I'm gonna use my extension. And I'm just gonna go ahead and tighten this up. Be careful of the wire though, because like I said, it's gonna wanna twist. Nope, oh, that's bottomed out. Let's give it a nice snug. And now route the wire underneath 
these wires. That's how it was originally. And we'll go ahead and go ahead and resecure it. I broke my little retainer, so I'll just wire tie it. But go ahead and plug it in. Make sure it clicks. And of course, if yours isn't broken, snap it back in. I'm going to take a wire tie and secure it. That should be good. Don't, don't go crazy tight if you have to do this. Cut off the excess. There we go. Let's get the battery tray back in. Get everything out of your way so you don't pinch any wires by accident. Set it down and then there were three bolts. One of them had this large washer. This one actually went in the back here in this divot. And then the other two, one was in the middle and then one in the front. So let's go ahead and tighten these all up. Make them nice and snug. Now let's get this module uh, resecured with the push clips. One at the top, one at the bottom. Put the center piece back in lock them in. Perfect. Grab your battery, slide it back in. Battery hold down actually has a direction. One of the ends will have this little notch. That's this one right here. Slides into the groove. And then goes over this side. Put on the two 10 millimeter nuts. Snug them up. Don't make them crazy tight. Now let's put this back. There we go. And of course the two, and of course the two battery terminals. Start with the positive, put that on. I'm gonna snug this up by hand. and the negative terminal. Okay, snug this up too. Perfect, now let's get the two covers on. This, this cover went back here. locks in place like that. And then the front cover slides into this one like this and then snaps down on the front. Okay, doesn't look perfect, but they're locked in. So we're good. Let's get the air box back in. Watch out for any uh, lines, hoses, wires, all that stuff needs to be out of the way. Slide it down. Okay, line this up. That's on. It's got a couple rubber mounts on the bottom. You'll feel it. Yep, there we go. You'll feel it once it falls into place. Press it down, just like that. This, whoops, this right here is on all the way. Perfect. Just so I don't forget, I'm gonna go ahead and connect this. Resecure the electrical connector. And now let's get this piece back in. Slide it down just like that. It locks in and make sure that everything lines up and then put this strap over to secure it. And one last thing we have to do is to tighten up this clamp. So I'm gonna grab my eight millimeter socket Okay, let's go ahead and snug this up. Be careful with these clamps if you're using a ratchet like this. The ratchet will easily overpower the clamp and it'll strip it out. So just make it snug and then stop right there. It should be good. Let's get the cowl back in. 
slide it under this part, um, but obviously over the edges here. Might be a little tricky. There we go. Okay, that lines up, falls into place. Uh, so let's put in the four bolts that hold it in. Uh, with it all lined up, go ahead and start the bolts in. I'm going to start in this side, and I'll snug these up while I'm here, and then I'll do the other side. Let's put this back while we're at it. This is the, the one with the two T25 torque bolts. Put the upper cowl back in. Make sure it goes over the two wiper arm studs and then there are some clips here that have to, have to slide under the uh, windshield. There you go. It has to be flush. This rubber seal is what prevents most of the water from going into the cowl. So now we have to put all the clips up front. This one in here, and uh, I'll just work my way down the line. Okay, they're all in. So if you don't remember which wiper arm went where, you can actually flip it over right here. I know it's upside down, but it says left hand. That's the driver's side, that's the left, left of the vehicle. So you can uh, find out that way. I'm gonna flip this up and just drop it down onto its mounting point here. Line up the splines and I have a, I have a mark here on the, uh, on the windshield right here. This is uh, basically, it looks like two T's, one upright, one upside down. The wiper blade needs to line up in the middle of that. That's how you know you get it right. So you put this one on first, line it up like that. Let's put on the nut that holds it on. Start the mounting nut, snug it up. Don't go crazy tight on this. Put the cap on, and then now let's do the same to the passenger side. As for the passenger side, same thing. Slide it on, line it up, drop it down, and this one should line up right underneath the driver's side one. There's a mark for this one also. You can see the two little T's right here. Line those up and put on the mounting nut, snug it up. Put the cap on. Let's finish tightening these two up now that we're underneath. Okay. And this one. check them. All right, these are tight. So let's put the bottom O2 sensor in. I'm going to twist the wire um, counterclockwise so that when I thread it in clockwise, it'll hopefully end up in a good spot. You don't want to leave the wire twisted. That's the goal. And the thing with this is you have to basically counter twist it enough times and it looks like I got it pretty much perfect. So let's grab a socket. You can actually in this case even grab a 22 millimeter wrench. Might be easier especially now that there's no transfer case in the way. And we'll snug it up. Okay that's nice and tight. 
course, I forgot to mention this, but I put anti-seize on these threads as well. Let's get the transfer case in. On the top of it, there was that breather hose. Don't forget to reconnect that. bottomed out all the way. And now, slide this in, line it up with the splines on the transmission. Perfect. I can leave it like this. It's not going to fall out. And then there was a bracket that went right up front here. I'm going to start this in first. Good. There were two bolts that connected the bracket to the transfer case and then one that connected it to the engine. I won't tighten the, the two yet until it's bolted up to the engine. Lift up on the uh, transfer case a little bit. That'll line up the bolt hole. That one's threading on perfectly. I'm just gonna go ahead and bottom it out by hand. Okay. Do the same to this one. And I won't tighten the other bracket yet, or the other bolt for this bracket, until I bolt the transfer case up to the transmission here. That way I can line up all of these. I will, however, make sure that these are nice and tight. Yep, that one is. And that one is too. Okay. Let's start all of the transfer case bolts into the transmission. Once you start one, automatically uh, they should all line up because you already have that bracket in. I'm just going to work my way around. And there are the two up top here that are a little bit harder to reach. But it's important to thread them in by hand because you're threading into aluminum and if it cross threads, uh, you're going to have a bad day. Okay, they're all in. I'm going to push the transfer case so that it's perfectly lined up and I'm just going to snug these up then we'll come back and torque them. Let's tighten up the two up top. I'm just gonna bottom them out, like I said, then we'll come back and torque them. I can't torque the top two just because of the angle that they're at. So once they're snug, once they're all tight, I'm just gonna give these an extra snug and then I'll torque the bottom ones. Another one I have to get with a wrench by hand. Okay. These two get torqued to 18 foot pounds. And then the one that bolts up to the engine is 46 foot pounds. Now I want to put in this exhaust bracket, or the, the bracket for the exhaust. I'm going to line it up with the two studs on the pipe. Okay, go ahead and push that up all the way. And then, then I'm going to take one of the studs and start it in to the transmission. There's 
one. I'm gonna put them in one at a time. That's threaded on all the way. I'm gonna snug it up in a second, but I also wanna put the other stud on right over here. And this fell off. I'm gonna temporarily use this mounting nut to make that stay in there. While that's in there, I'm gonna go ahead and tighten up this stud up against the transmission. Okay, that's in, but now we have the uh, uh, two mounting nut situation here. Use one wrench to hold one and another one to undo the other one. And now, because that stud is snugged up in there, once you remove this mounting nut, it should leave the stud in while the mounting nut comes off. The reason I can't just leave this nut on here is because this one actually belongs up there. And uh, well, I have to put it back where it belongs. There we go. Okay, now I can take these two 13 millimeter nuts and put them on up here. They go on the exhaust side, right up there. These larger 15 millimeter ones go on, they go on this stud that we just put in on the transmission side. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and get these started. And then we still have this one stud to drive in all the way. This nut for me is kind of just stuck on here due to corrosion, most likely. So um, it, it just kind of is driving the stud in by itself, which is fine. If not, you can always use the inverted Torx at the end or put two nuts on, snug them up, and do the same thing we did for the other stud. I'm gonna bring these close, but I won't tighten them yet because if you notice, this bracket pivots up and down. So I wanna tighten these two, two 13 millimeter up first, bottom it out up against the exhaust, then tighten the transmission side. Let's get these tight. Okay, now we can snug up the 215s. There we go. Now, when you put the studs in, you don't have to worry about them being very tight because when you tighten up the nuts, it actually doesn't just pull, pull the nut tight up against the stud and the bracket here, but it actually wants to pull the stud out at the same time. So it's basically self-tightening in the end, kind of, if you know what I mean. All right, make it snug. I'm gonna double check it with a longer wrench. There's one and two. Perfect, this is all tight. Now we can get this engine mount in. What I'm gonna do is line it up with the transmission first. So put in the three bolts that secure it here and don't tighten any yet. Just put them in and then we can use the, uh, for me it's gonna be a pull jack, but of course if you're on the ground you can just use a floor jack and basically move the engine side to side or back and forth until you can line up this one through bolt. It'll be easiest to line up one as opposed to trying to line up three. So, these are all in. Now we can get this one in, and this is also on a rubber bushing, so it actually lines up perfectly for me. And they're all 15 millimeter in size, so let's snug up all of them. I'm gonna start with the ones on the transmission and finish up with that one. One, I'm gonna have to do that one by hand. Okay, I'm actually gonna take this one back out so I can pull this down so I can get my wrench on this bolt and tighten this one up. Let's just double check. Yep, that one's tight. Nice and snug. And same for this one, of course. Slide it in and thread it on.
nice and snug. This is the shield that goes on top of the transfer case. Remember, it has the three eight millimeter headed bolts that go on. It goes on like this, so this is gonna be this side of the transfer case, and this right here is gonna be the output shaft that goes to the rear. So I'll slide it on through the back here. Once you think it's lined up, put in the three bolts. Unfortunately, you won't be able to see much of what you're doing. So it'll all be by feel, but you can always get a mirror and look up there. I got one to start in, and then here's the next one. Okay, there's number two. Number three is all the way tucked up at the front, kind of like right here, but up there. Okay, there we go, there's the third one. I'm gonna bring them, bottom them out as much as I can by hand. And now I'm gonna grab my ratchet and tighten them all up. That's one. And two. And three, all right, the shield's on. Some bolts that hold on the drive shaft, and this is only three of the many that are there, but basically what you wanna do is clean off the old bolts, whether they look like this with the blue thread locker or a little bit dirtier like this. You wanna clean it all off, and then we will apply new blue thread locker. It's important to do that because the drive shaft sees a lot of vibrations, and you do not want these bolts backing out by themselves. So clean up the threads. I'm gonna use my wire wheel for that, but if you don't have one, you can use a wire brush. It'll just take a little bit longer, and then uh, we'll install the drive shaft. Let's get the drive shaft back in. I cleaned up the uh, bolts, which I'll show you in a second, and I also cleaned up where the drive shaft mounts, both on the differential in the rear and on uh, the transfer case on the front. Okay, so slide it into position. Okay, I'm gonna leave it here for now for a second. I'm gonna put a pole jack in so that doesn't fall on my head. I'm gonna set it on this pole jack right here in the middle just to temporarily support it. Just like that. So I'll line up the drive shaft, make sure that all of the uh, bolt holes are lined up. I clean up the bolts, threads, and I put blue thread locker on them. Slide them in, start them on by hand. I want to make sure that they're actually engaged into the threads here. If, uh, oh, there we go. Sometimes you have to wiggle the drive shaft around in order to make these line up, which I had to. And the front's still disconnected. We're able to spin this around. And slide these on. Last two. Okay, now with all of these started, let's bottom them out in a cross pattern and torque them to 26 foot pounds. I'm gonna use my air gun, but I will be very gentle. I don't wanna exceed the torque spec because I wanna come back with the torque wrench. Okay, I'm just basically bottoming them out. Of course, like I said, in a cross pattern. Double check this one. Okay. All right, let's get the torque wrench. Unfortunately, when I try to apply torque with the torque wrench, 
um, just because of the angle here, my socket wants to slip out. So I'm just gonna use my air gun. The torque is only 26 foot pounds. So, you know, just make it tight. And there's thread locker on them, so they'll, they'll be in there. Just try not to over tighten them, but don't leave them too loose either. Okay, let's put in the drive shaft at the front on the transfer case. Try to line it up the best you can. Um, can't really see much here, but I'm just gonna put in these two bolts and give it a little spin. And I'm just gonna feel for where the bolts wanna drop into their mounting holes. This one dropped in, as you can see, but notice how it went in all the way. That is actually the hole on the other side that we used to punch the drive shaft out, so it's the wrong hole. That's, I'm just gonna spin it and pass that uh, hole, and right now it went in, but it didn't go in all the way, so that tells me that these are the threaded holes that the mounting bolts actually go into. And as I thread it in, it doesn't wanna come out, which means it is actually engaging with the threads, which is perfect. Uh, but but just like the rear, I put in a uh, blue thread locker on these mounting bolts, and of course I cleaned up the threads, and I'm gonna start them all in by hand. Uh, my transmission is in park now, so I can't spin the drive shaft, but once these are connected, I'm gonna go and put it in neutral. Okay, there we go, they're all in. Let's put it in neutral and tighten them up. And I want to start in the bolts most of the way first. What I'm doing here is I'm going back and forth between two bolts. Oh, this one's snug already. And I'm just trying to basically seat the drive shaft into the yoke on the uh, transfer case. I got these two bottomed out. Now let's go put it in neutral. Right, let's tighten these up. I think that's all of them. Let me just double check them all.
All right, I think one more and that'll be all of them. Okay, they're tight. Let's put this shield back in here, line it up. It can only go in one way, so if you have it backwards, you'll know. Start in all of the mounting bolts. We'll do one on each side so I can let go of it. All right, let's snug this up. Put on this bracket, which supports the carrier bearing. Line this up. Put on the mounting, put on the mounting bolts for the bracket. And before I tighten up the bracket bolts, I'm gonna line up the carrier bearing so that I can still move the bracket around. Put in the two small bolts. And get those tightened up. And now tighten up the bracket. Put on the exhaust hanger that goes right here. I put just a little bit of grease. You can use silicone paste. That would be uh, preferred. Uh, that'll help this slide on a little bit easier. Slide it on both sides. I'm gonna use the leverage of the pipe to hopefully press this in all the way. There we go, that slid on. Let's get the two bolts that mount it. Put on the two bolts that mount this on. Now let's put on a brand new gasket on this pipe here, slide in some bolts. I had to use new hardware. I'm gonna thread on some nuts. And we'll go ahead and snug these up. Let's tighten these up. Make sure that these are nice and tight. Okay, perfect. Let's put on this brace. I'm gonna start my bolts on this side. Start another one over here. And with these two, it'll stay in by itself. Then you can start in all the other ones. Two nuts up here in the middle. and tighten all of those. Okay. Now take your axle, slide it through, and put it into the transfer case. Be careful of your seal. You don't want to damage it. Slide it all the way in. 
as it gets closer to being fully inserted, uh, spin it because it has to line up and only then will it go in all the way. To actually get it to lock in all the way, you can use the weight of the axle and just tap it like that until it slides in all the way. And that looks like it is almost fully seated. That's it right there. Right here you can see the carrier bearing. The way you know that it's 100% seated is um, when, first of all, you can't push it anymore. But also you can look here and there's a little lip on the outside and it'll just bottom out up against that lip. That's how you know. And at that point, you can take this little cap, slide it on, take your two mounting nuts, start those on, make them nice and snug. And then uh, we'll put the charge pipe in. Nice and tight. And nice and tight. Okay. Put this in. I'm going to slide it onto the bottom first. Make sure it goes in all the way. And then on the turbo side on the top, make sure that goes on all the way. Loosen up this clamp a little more so I can get it around here. Okay, position it right where it was before. You can see the mark that it left, so just line that up and tighten it back up. It's important to have these tight, but of course you don't want to over tighten it. But if you don't leave it tight enough, you'll have boost leaks and then uh, obviously, that'll cause issues. So, snug that up. That's perfect. And, of course, do the same to this one up here. Once everything is seated. That feels pretty tight. Okay, and if you had a shield here, you would put that back on. I don't have one. I put some anti-seize on the splines of the axle here, especially in this climate where rust is uh, a big issue. This way it won't seize up into the hub. You don't need a, a lot, just enough to coat it. Now pull the knuckle out, get the axle down there, slide the axle into the hub. Watch out for your ball joint boot, of course. Make sure the splines match up. Then we'll grab a pry bar, pry this down. It's lined up, but it hasn't gone in yet. Now let's wiggle this around until the ball joint pops in. And the axle needs to slide in at the same time. There you have it. Use a rubber mallet and tap on the control arm to ensure that the ball joint is in all the way. It is perfect. You don't want to tap on the ball joint here because you could potentially ruin it. The axle pushed in also, that's perfect. Let's put the pinch bolt in for the ball joint. Slide this bolt through. It went in front to back. I put some anti-seize on the shank of the bolt. That way it hopefully doesn't get stuck in there in the future. You can use a little hammer and tap it in if needed. There we go. And put the nut on on the other side. This bolt gets tightened to 61 foot-pounds. 18 millimeter socket. I'm going to torque the nut side. That way it's more accurate. If you torque the bolt side, you actually get the friction of the bolt spinning in there on top of the torque. So 61 foot pounds. That's it right there. Let's put on the axle nut. This gets tightened down to 59 foot pounds and then an additional 90 degrees. Um, I'm going to tighten it with my air gun first, but I'm not going to fully torque it with this. I just want to bottom it out quicker. Okay, it stopped spinning right there. Let's torque it to 59. I'm gonna use a pry bar, stick it in between the lug studs like this. This is going to actually help me hold the hub while I tighten it down. Otherwise, it's just gonna to wanna to spin. 
So 59 foot-pounds right there. And now I'm going to go an additional 90 degrees, which is basically a quarter of a turn. Okay, so now for the 90 degrees, I have my torque wrench set to count degrees, but obviously that's just a quarter of a turn. So if you don't have that, just take your breaker bar and go a quarter of a turn. That's it right there. Let's put the wheel on. Put on all five of your lug nuts, bottom them out, and torque them to 100 foot-pounds. Bring it down and torque it. 100 foot-pounds. Just double check them. Okay. Everything's put back together. We're in the vehicle and we want to check the transmission fluid. We lost some, so it needs to be topped off. You want to do that by turning on the car, letting it warm up a little bit, running it through the gears. Uh, you can take it out for a drive if you haven't lost much, but preferably at a standstill or on a lift, and then we need to go underneath, check the level, and then top off as needed. So, let's start the engine. We'll give this a second to warm up. So we're in park, the engine has ran for about a minute or two. I'm gonna go ahead and put it in reverse. The wheels are all off the ground. I'm in reverse, it engaged reverse. I'm gonna let off the brake and just let it spin the wheels a little bit, give it couple revs uh, just to get it going a little faster. It says I'm going about 15 miles an hour. That's good. Um, I'll let off. One thing to note is when you're doing this, especially if you're on a lift or jack stands or anything like that, don't put it in park until you know that the vehicle is completely stopped. Preferably go to neutral first. Otherwise, uh, well, the vehicle is stopped, but the wheels aren't. So you're going to hear some odd noises. Now I'm going to go into drive. Uh, but I want to pick the gear that I'm in just so I know that it went through all the gears. So I'm actually going to go into sport mode and then press the down arrow or the, the minus button on the shifter. That's going to select first gear for me. I'm going to let off the brake and accelerate just a little bit. And then I'm going to manually shift it into second, third. I'm going to wait every time to make sure it engages these gears. Fourth. There's fourth fifth, and sixth. Okay, let's downshift it. Fifth, fourth, third, second, first. Won't downshift into first. I have to slow down. There we go. All right. Put it back into neutral. We'll slow down the wheels, put it in park. Now let's lift it up. The engine has fully warmed up, I can see, or at least mostly warmed up. Um, unless you take it for a drive, it's hard to fully warm up the transmission with it on a lift, but that's why you run it through the gears, let it run for a little bit. Now let's lift it up and check the level of the fluid. Here's the check plug right next to the driver's side axle. It's a 14 millimeter. We're gonna pull this plug and with a collection bucket underneath. I'm gonna crack this open. And if fluid comes out, this is just like a differential. If fluid comes out, then you know it's full. Now obviously make sure you're on a flat level surface. The engine is still running in park. And if no fluid comes out, then you know that you are low on fluid and we need to add. Uh, I most likely will have to add some. I'll show you how. Even if I don't have to add, I'll show you where so that you know. But let's see what happens here. Okay, nothing comes out. That, that means we're low on fluid, we need to add. I'm gonna add about a quarter of a quart at a time, and unfortunately, the only way to know is to put this back, add up top, come back down, and check it. So, we're gonna have to go up and down a few times. 
tighten this up. Let's add some fluid. Right here, you can see the transmission fill. It's right between the engine and the air box. Stick your hand down here and pull straight up on this plug. This is the cap for it. And I have a long funnel. If you don't have one, well, they're inexpensive. You should probably get one because otherwise I don't know how you're gonna get to it. Stick it down there. And once it's in, you can add some transmission fluid. Refer to your owner's manual if you don't know what type of transmission fluid to add. I'm gonna add about a quarter of a quart, and then I'm gonna check it again because I'm not sure how much I'm missing. So this is a one quart bottle. Like I said, I'm gonna add a quarter and check it again. We'll go small increments at a time because it's easier to add several times than it is to have to drain just a little bit because if you have to drain it and you pull that drain plug, it's gonna come out like a waterfall. So let's check it now. Now let's check the level. I added some fluid. Uh, it will depend on every situation, how much you add. So I can't tell you exactly how much to add. You'll just have to add and check and add and check. But let's see what it's at. Oh, okay, a little bit of fluid comes out. We'll just let this level out a little bit and then uh, we should be good. You know, if you overfill it a lot, it's gonna shoot out there. And uh, this one is probably just like an eighth of a quart over full, maybe less than that. So that's why I said go small increments at a time. That way you can maintain a decent level without wasting transmission fluid. Put the plug back in, it stops dripping. So let's snug it up. Don't go crazy tight on it. Just make it nice and snug. Use a rag and get off all the excess fluid that dripped. And then of course I'm gonna use some brake parts cleaner and degrease the surface because if you leave it wet, you won't know if it's a leak or if it's residual fluid. To check for exhaust leaks as well, you have this connection here, which if you didn't clean up properly, you'll have exhaust leaking here and you'll see it not only by um, literally seeing the steam come out once the car first starts, but also you'll get water dripping here from condensation building up until it warms up. So that's how you know that it's leaking. You'll hear it too, most likely, and you'll feel the air coming out if you put your hand in there. But be careful, because this gets very hot very quick. And then the same thing on the other side of the pipe, next to the turbo or on the turbo, you wanna make sure that you have no exhaust leaks. Um, if you have any leaks, you'll definitely hear them. Like I said, when you rev up the engine, it'll kind of sound like air is escaping. So in that case, you would wanna take this back apart, not the whole thing, just wherever it's leaking, clean it up some more, and make sure the gasket is sealing up properly and then put it back together because you don't want to get carbon monoxide poisoning inside the passenger compartment. Now that we've filled the transmission, everything is topped off. The vehicle has ran, it is up to the proper level. And we're ready to take the funnel off of here. So pull it straight out and put this cap back in. I cleaned up the cap um, because I didn't want any debris that was on here falling into the transmission by accident. So. Just try to stick it back on there and at this point once you're sure that it is properly secured in there make sure none of the other wires or hoses got disconnected from reaching in there because that can cause issues and now you can take it for a road test when only the best will do demand trq the only company that lets you view before you do trq is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.